What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at using containers for the layout of your Flutter apps. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to start to look at using containers for the layout of your Flutter app. So up until now, we've just been sort of throwing stuff up on the screen. In this video, we're going to start to organize our layout a little bit more using containers. And a container is pretty much just what it seems like it is. It's a container. It holds things helps you organize things in your layout. And if you come from like a web development background, HTML, CSS, think of a container as a div, like a CSS div. It just sort of wraps around everything and contains it. And then you can do things to that div, to that container that affects the things inside of it, right? So it's just a very easy way to organize things. So that's what we're going to start to look at in this video. So let's head over to the documentation very quickly because, you know, there's so much in Flutter. It's just important to familiarize yourself with the documentation. And this is actually useful. Go to docs.flutter.dev, click on the widgets catalog, and then we're going to be dealing with layout here. So we click on layout and then come down here and we want to look at containers. So just, so I definitely recommend spending a couple of minutes just sort of reading through this page it has all kinds of different examples on how you can use your containers, different things you can do with them, the different properties, the different methods and all that good stuff. So take a look at that. So let's create our first container. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, so all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so I've got the app we've been working on so far. It's just got this picture and it's this horrible color of green, which we're going to have to change that because that's terrible. And, but I've renamed this containers. It was secondly before I've just renamed the project containers. So we can sort of differentiate it moving forward. So I'm using Visual Studio Code. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Flutter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So, all right, let's look through our main.dart file here. And here we see the body. And I'm going to get rid of everything we have in here, that image, this color. And let's just take all of this out and sort of start over here. And to use a container, it's a widget like any other widget. So we can just call a container widget. And there we are. So I can put this on separate screens. And we want to come after this, obviously. So first, let's create a child. And inside of this, let's just create some text, right? So we know how to do this text. Uh, yo, what's going on? I don't know. Uh, let's stick a comma after that. And then we can go ahead and save this hot reload should pop this right up. And boom, here we see the widget. Now our background is white and the container is white. So you can't really see the size of this thing. And you'll notice that this scrunches it right up here to the top left corner. So let's add some color so we could see what is the exact container and what's not the container. So we could come through here and inside of our body, we could just add a color and then let's call colors dot and you know, anything you really want. Well, it looks good. Heal. <laughs> I don't know, slap a comma on there, hot reload this thing by saving it. And you can see now the container itself is just teal. And that's cool. So the default expands the container to whatever is inside of it, right? So we've just got this text. So it's just expanding just to the size of the text. Now we can overrule that if we want by adding a width and a height. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'll come down here and let's give it a width of what, like 150.0. And you'll notice the point zero, we kind of need to do that. And we can give it a height of, I don't know, 150.0 again. So if we save this, check it out, we can see now, boom, it's much bigger, 150 by 150. We got a nice little square going on there. So you can resize this to anything you want very easily. So that's cool. Next, we can give this thing some internal padding if we want. So let's come down here and give it some padding. Just this easy. And this is going to be a const. And to do this, we do edge insets dot all, and then we give it some number. So I'm just going to go 10.0. So if we go ahead and save this, come back over here, you can see now there's some padding. If we really sort of bump it up, we can try 50. And we got a lot of padding all around it. So very easy, very cool. Let's take this back a little bit. Let's move it back to 20. Because I want to show you something here we can align this text if we want. So let's say we want to put it in the center of this container, we can come down here and give it an alignment. And then we just call alignment dot whatever we want. So 
you could see different options here. I'm just going to go center. It's a comma at the end, save this head back over here. And now we see it's nice and centered. Very cool. So now this thing is scrunched up right up in the top left corner. Maybe you want that. Maybe you want to move it around. We can give it a margin. So let's come down here and give it a margin. And again, we want this sort of edge insets guy and we've got all, and then we can give it whatever margin we want. So I don't know, let's go 100.0. Really move this thing around, slap a comma at the end, save it, come back over here, and boom, now it's moved over 100 and down 100. Very cool. Maybe we want to try 200. I don't know. Oh, that's all kinds of crazy. Maybe 150. And we'll get into each of these things in more detail going further. In this video, I just want to sort of familiarize yourself with the container, give you some basic things. We'll get into more detail in future videos, uh, but there's a lot to unpack here. We could spend several videos on all of these different things and, you know, different options for each ones. And we'll do that a little bit later. But in this video, like I said, I just want to kind of show you how to mess around with these things. So those are some basic things you can mess with. If you want to head back over to the documentation, and kind of look through here, there's all kinds of other things you can transform it by sort of tilting it a little bit. That's this uh, transform function right there, you can change the the shape. Right? Let's see if there's an example of that here, there really should be there is not Huh? no example of shape here. Hmm. Yeah, weird that they don't have that. Uh, it's a decoration property. If you want to look it up, it's got to be in here somewhere. Let's see. Da, 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 not there, not there, not there. It's got to be Yeah, here's, here's the list of properties. Yeah, check out the decoration property I read about that. We'll probably get into that in a future video. But like I said, in this video, we're just touching the bases. And that's all there is to it. Now this is super useful containers, you're just going to use these all the time. Anytime you want to add something to your app, you're going to want to wrap it in a container, because you could set these properties so very easily. And then inside of it, do whatever you want to do. So containers, pretty useful. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.